Frozen shoulder is characterized by pain and stiffness in the joint, and in this video, we will explore methods of managing it while it takes this course. Hi everyone, and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard, and today I have exercise advice for you if you're suffering with a frozen shoulder. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice, and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. Frozen shoulder, also known as adhesive capsulitis, causes an increase in pain and a decrease in mobility that can greatly affect your ability to carry out day-to-day -day activities, such as combing your hair, reaching up for something on a high shelf or doing up a bra strap. It is thought that a thickening or tightening of the shoulder capsule, bursa, subscapularis muscle tendon and ligaments around the joint cause the pain and stiffness, greatly reducing the function of the shoulder, but it's not fully understood why. In some cases, it can come on as a result of trauma or other health conditions such as diabetes, and it can last for anything from 12 months to well over three years, so there's no quick fix. There are three stages that are identified as part of the frozen shoulder process, and they are the freezing stage, also known as the pain predominant stage. This is where the pain is at its worst, and you notice that you're losing mobility as it becomes increasingly stiff. The frozen stage, also known as the stiffness predominant stage, this is the period when the pain is beginning to subside, but the joint mobility is at its worst and movement is severely restricted. And the thawing stage, also known as the recovery stage. This is the final phase when the range of movement begins to return and the pain symptoms are less frequent occurrences. If you have shoulder pain or stiffness, but haven't had it checked by a doctor or physiotherapist, then this should be your first port of call to identify if your symptoms are relating to frozen shoulder so you can eliminate other possible causes. The shoulder is a very versatile ball and socket joint that allows us to perform a wide range of movements. So frozen shoulder affects all aspects of its movement due to the pain or stiffness, including flexion, where you can't raise your arm in front of you as high as before, extension, where you can't take your arm behind your back as far as you did before. Abduction, where lifting your arm out to the side feels really restrictive. External rotation, where taking the hand outwards away from the body is difficult. And internal rotation, where taking the hand behind the back is difficult. Therefore, to help you manage the pain and stiffness symptoms while the condition takes this course, I have six stretches and mobility exercises you can do. You can pick the ones that best help you and perform these once or twice every day, but providing that your pain doesn't go beyond a one or two out of 10 while doing them. So certainly don't push into higher levels of pain as this might have repercussions. Doing them gently though, with some slight discomfort will be okay. A nice way to increase the space in the shoulder joint itself is conducting pendulums. Using a support for your other arm so you can lean forward slightly, begin to rotate your hips while letting the arm hang loose. You're not using the muscles to move the arm, but rather allowing the movement of your body to swing the arm gently. You can also hold a small weight in your hand to increase the gravitational assistance on the shoulder, but aim to stay relaxed with the movement. Allow the arm to swing at least 10 times in your chosen movement, which could be forwards and backwards, side to side, or making circles in either direction. Butterfly arms can be done seated or lying down as I'm showing here, which could be in bed. So place the palms of the hands behind the head and gently let the elbows drop down until you feel some discomfort. Hold it there for a few seconds and then bring it back up and start again until you've repeated the movement 10 times. If placing the hands behind the head is too painful or restrictive, then start by placing the fingertips on the forehead and adopt the same movement. To gently stretch the muscles and soft tissue around the joint, start with an arm supported stretch. Here I'm using a foam roller on a tabletop to control how far my shoulder joint is flexed, but a foam roller is not essential. Start with your forearm on your support with your thumb pointing up. 
This will help free up some joint space by externally rotating it. Begin to slowly move your arm away from you and then at the same time slowly dropping the torso forwards until you reach a stretch and level of slight discomfort in the shoulder. Hold the stretch for at least one minute, but you can do it for longer if desired. Likewise, you can do this on a kitchen worktop, computer desk, or even up against a wall at any time of the day. The next stretch uses a stick, pole, or broom handle to extend the shoulder. Place one end of your stick against a wall about the same height as your hip and where it's not likely to slip. Holding the other end by your side with your palm facing forwards, begin to slowly walk forwards, allowing your arm to extend behind you with the elbow straight. Find the point of discomfort and hold it for a minimum of one minute as before. While holding these stretch positions, try to ensure that you breathe in a relaxed manner to help relieve the buildup of any tension. This will also allow you to move further into the stretch if required. Using the stick again, but this time for external or lateral rotation of the shoulder, Start seated with your shoulders down and back in good posture and your affected arm holding one end of your stick with the elbow bent at 90 degrees and holding a rolled up towel under it to ensure your elbow remains fixed at that point in your waist. Holding the stick further down with the other hand, gently use this arm to push the hand outwards away from the body, ensuring that the elbow continues to pin the towel in at your side until you feel it in your shoulder. As before, hold the stretch for at least one minute or more and focus on relaxing your breathing. The final stretch helps with internal or medial rotation of the shoulder. Start in between the doorway and see if you can take the hand of your affected arm behind you onto the top of your bottom and begin to slide it up your back. Your elbow will start to stick out at the side. If you can get the back of your hand up as far as reaching your kidneys, this is the point on the side of the lower back just below the rib cage, then use your doorway to place the point of your elbow against and very carefully start to slowly step backwards. This will bring your elbow forwards, internally rotating the shoulder even more. It's likely that with frozen shoulder, getting the hand to reach the lower back will be very good. So this additional movement using the doorway is only really if your range of movement is very good. Again, hold it for one minute or more and relax. I hope you can take something away from this video today. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.